The book is called 100 Grey Cups, and Stephen Brent, well, he hasn't written that many books yet, but you're well on your way here. Oh, uh, I've, I've written a few, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've written a few. Exactly. So I guess talk about, uh, first off, before we get into kind of the specific stories of the book here, the process of it. I mean, you can Google search as much as you want, but you're not going to come up with a quarter of the information that's in this book about uh, a lot of the teams in the CFL. No, it was, you know, it was tricky researching this book. It, um, you know, I've written about hockey and I've written about baseball, and those were relatively straightforward in terms of research. Uh, you know, hockey's legacy is all kept in the Hockey Hall of Fame. There's a lot of archival material. But weirdly enough, the CFL, you know, 100 Grey Cups in, this stuff is kind of scattered all over the place. Mm -hmm. there, there's been very little written about the Canadian Football League. There should have been more, but there hasn't been much. And so I was kind of left on my own <laughs> in a lot of ways to find this stuff in all kinds of different places, film collections and newspaper files and all kinds of stuff. I, you know, I learned a lot over the course of doing it, but uh, yeah, it was a research challenge. A lot of fun. Oh, exactly. I mean, you cover every team in the, in the CFL in the book. So being that you're in Winnipeg, we'll focus yeah, on absolutely. our own Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And, and a place that, you know, Winnipeg gets a little bit of a reputation of being a little bit on the frugal side. But <laughs> what people might be surprised to know is in 1935, Winnipeg was the first club to pay a significant sum of money at the time for talent from the U.S. They went out and, oh, well, I guess they bought a great cup in a, in a way, but it, it, you know, there's a reason for it. The, uh, in the Western teams to that point that had come east to play in the Grey Cup faced a huge disadvantage and they got slaughtered. They, they, they had never won and they didn't, it wasn't close. Um, I think that for the cumulative score of those games was something like 216 to 29. Yeah, it wasn't close. So, so in, in 1935 in Winnipeg, um, and this is a time before there was even really a league in the West. They didn't really even have a schedule to play, but the, there was a football club here and the people running it said, look, we're going to go, we're going to try and win the Grey Cup. Um, they put together 7,500 bucks, which in the depths of the Depression was a lot of money right. and they went south. They went to North Dakota and South Dakota and they started looking around for football town and came back with nine guys, nine Americans, including a Fritzy Hansen who is one of the great greatest players in the history of the league. But but it doesn't end there. It's it's a great story. They they beat Regina in their one real game of the year, a playoff right. game. That's it. And then they head to uh, they're gonna play the Hamilton Tigers who are the champions of the big east, the big four in the East. Um, Winnipeg went to Detroit, Michigan, set up a training camp before the game for a couple of weeks and they invited the press staff down from Toronto and Hamilton to see the team. Uh, they had a scrimmage against a high school team from Windsor. Um, but they wore different numbered jerseys, and they kind of lay down. They tried to dog it. They, they won the game, but they looked terrible. Right. And so all the reporters went back to Toronto and Hamilton and said, you know, this Winnipeg team that's here, that's just another more cannon fodder from the West. We're used to this story, right? Another bad Western team. And then when they showed up at the HAAA grounds in Hamilton, it was a completely different team, completely different story. They beat the Hamilton Tigers pretty thoroughly in that game and then got on the train back to Winnipeg and had one great party by all accounts. So the first, yeah, that big, a big moment. A big moment in terms of Americans in the CFL, which has been a running story ever since, really. And of course, the first Western team to win the Grey Cup. And what you mentioned in the book is Winnipeg, to this point anyways, we will emphasize that point, is it kind of had three golden eras, one of them being the, the 50s, which was one of your favorite eras to talk about. Oh yeah, well, I'm a Hamilton guy, right? So for <laughs> us, it wasn't so golden. But between 1957 and 1965, Hamilton beat Winnipeg in 1957. I'll point that out. And Hamilton beat Winnipeg <laughs> in 1965. But in between, you know, those Bud Grant teams won right. four out of five Grey Cups. So a, a dynasty there. Bud Grant, uh, Ken Plain, Leo Lewis, uh, fantastic teams. And, you know, dominant team in the West for all of those years. And, uh, you know, Hamilton had great, great teams. right? And, but they were never quite good enough to beat Winnipeg, including in the famous Fog Bowl. Exactly. And uh, another thing that we can kind of talk about is in 1951, when the BC Lions were trying to get into the league, they came to the, they came to the league at that point saying, you know, we want to get in here. It's $25,000 a show of good faith and you consider the Grey Cup last year BC beating Winnipeg Winnipeg one of the teams that said no nah, we don't want you in here isn't that a funny story I, that's one I didn't know at all but you think about it you know uh, Vancouver they build the big stadium for the Empire for the Commonwealth Games mm -hmm. so Empire Stadium is built so they have this beautiful new stadium the best stadium in Canada they're asked for $25,000 which is a lot of money at that point for a franchise they write the check and uh, and they have to guarantee season tickets 6,500 season tickets they come up with that and still they don't want to let them in the league <laughs> Uh, the, especially the Western teams. There was huge resistance here, as you said, in Winnipeg and in Saskatchewan. They did want to let them in the league. And finally, you know, finally, grudgingly, the Lions are allowed in the league in 1954, you know, with a situ like most expansion teams, they were awful. But, you know, the other thing that's significant about that is that, the, you know, now we're used to the Canucks and the Lions and Vancouver.
Vancouver being part of the national conversation in sport, they were very much on their own before that in sport. They weren't part of what we were doing in the rest of Canada. You know, and that kind of brought them into the fold in a lot of ways. They were doing their own thing sports-wise before that, but now, you know, after 54, they became part of us. And the, you know, and the Grey Cup started being, was held in Vancouver, you know, many times in, in Empire Stadium. So throughout, uh, just quickly here to kind of wrap things up, uh, where can people get the book? And also, do you have a favorite story? Um, you can get the book at any bookstore, Chapters Indigo, your favorite independent bookstore, um, yeah, online, any of those places. <laughs> I, you know, my favorite story, uh, it, it, it's, it's probably, it's a weird one because my team lost, but you know, the 89 Grey Cup game in, in Toronto, Hamilton to Saskatchewan, which, you know, the people in Toronto did their best to ignore, but I'll tell you <laughs> something, it's the best football game I've ever seen in any league. Um, Dave Ridgeway won it with that last second kick. It was it broke our hearts in Hamilton, but boy, I have never seen a better exhibition of football than that game. Fantastic. That's Stephen Brown on his book, 100 Grey Cups. Like he said, you can pick it up at almost any bookstore or online, If and it's an absolute must-have if you're a football fan, especially of the CFL. For Shaw TV, I'm Mitchell Clinton.